So I'm going to look at it and I'm like, ee, there's something going on. No, I can go ahead and instead of asking the developers within my team, I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, what events happened over time? Okay, there it is. So something happened, right? Something here happened. Two deployments happened. Hmm. One deployment happened. Two deployments, one deployment. Now this is more the time around when the latency increased, right? 526. Now I can also set a different time, but that's my time. So it's handy to have that my time. So here, 529 actually, not 26, 529. Does that fit together with what we see in Grafana? Here, 529. That's when it started. That's when the high latency started. <gasps> that must be the deployment, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel for another video of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. My name is Anais and today I'm going to show you how I set up my monitoring stack. Now that monitoring stack includes Prometheus for our metrics, to gather our metrics, Grafana to visualize our metrics within dashboards and to implement potentially additional alerting and so on on those metrics. Then we implement Loki. Now Loki is responsible through a tool called Promptail to gather our logs from our different nodes across our cluster. And once you have set up that monitoring stack, we will then also set up a tool for troubleshooting our applications. And that tool is Commodore. Now I've done a video previously on Commodore, which was an overview of the platform. Today I'm going to show you how you can set up your entire monitoring stack, including Commodore for troubleshooting purposes specifically, and then also how you can use that monitoring stack, including Commodore, to debug your running application. Now, if you prefer the written content, I have the blog post that details everything step by step, link below in the description. So check that out if you prefer the written content or if you would like to have the written content to refer back to throughout the video. Now, I'm gonna get started. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Also, please do join our community chat on Discord if you have any questions. There's an amazing, helpful community who would love to reply to you on any questions that you might have. Also, if you enjoy this content, I have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free online learning resources from across the DevOps space from amazing people such as yourself right to your inbox on a weekly basis. Now, let's get started. Now, as you can see here, we are right now on the Commodore dashboard. This is on a cluster that I've already set up with basically the end state. This is where we want to get to. Now I have here my app running and a pinger. Now the pinger will ping the app and the app will respond with a pong. So this is ultimately my main example application and these apps will just play ping pong with each other. Now additionally I have my alert manager, I have Prometheus, I have Loki running, I have Promptail, I have Grafana running, I have everything running within my cluster in this state. Now I'm going to remove the cluster and I'm going to start from scratch to show you how to set everything up. You have to sign up to Commodore to access the dashboard. Now the sign up process is very straightforward. You just provide them with your email and they will respond to you with the access details. To follow this tutorial, there are two prerequisites. The first one is that you have a Kubernetes cluster installed. I'm going to delete this demo environment cluster that I've currently set up in my Cebo account. Now, if you don't have access to a cloud platform cloud provider, I highly suggest you to sign up to Cebo. You will get $250 worth of credit upon signing up. Now, and then you can spin up your first Kubernetes cluster. You could also use any other cloud provider or any other cluster that you fancy. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and use Cebo. Now, I'm going to name this demo cluster. Three instances. I want to have them of size medium and I don't want to have traffic installed and I'm just going to create this cluster now. Now this will take about two minutes to spin up until we have the cluster. In the meantime I'm going to show you the other prerequisite that we need. We need to have Helm installed. So in your terminal you should have kubectl already installed and then you want to have Helm installed. Now Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. Imagine it to be similar to npm where you basically bundle a bunch of files together and you can install them as one, but for Kubernetes. Now what Helm does, it gathers your Kubernetes YAML manifest as part of Helm charts. Now for our tutorial specifically, we are gonna use the Kube Prometheus stack operator Helm chart. Oof, mouthful. So um, here are the details on how you can install it. I'm gonna walk you through the installation steps once we have our cluster set up. 
Okay, now here's our cluster and you can, it's ready to be connected to. So we're just going to download our cube config. So now the cube config is in my downloads folder. And now I can go ahead and I can connect to it. So I'm just going to say export and I'm going to connect to my demo cluster. Now if I do kubectl get notes, I should see all of my notes within that cluster. Awesome. Now I just want to go ahead and connect to all the other clusters, like all in all of my other terminal to the same cluster as well, since I was connected to my other cluster before. And in these two as well, because we wanted lots of terminals for our port forwarding, so I'm preferring to set everything up right now. Okay, awesome. So I'm connected to my demo cluster and all of my terminals now. Now let's open our application of what we actually want to deploy. I have set up some aspects, some parts to it already. So as you can see here, this is our everything that we will need to use, like all the custom resources that we will need to use. Now ignore app. App is just basically a copy for the application, for the actual application for the ping pong app that I copied from another demo. Here, all of the, in these three folders specifically, are all of the resources that we're going to use. Now, first off, we want to go into the monitoring folder. And this repository is linked below as well. So we're here in the monitoring folder. Let me just zoom in. And we have here a values YAML file. Now, this values YAML file specifies two things. We can clean it up a little bit. So the first thing is it specifies some configurations for Prometheus. Okay, so Prometheus, and then if you read on Prometheus spec, service monitor selector, nil values, home values. Okay, so this basically says in just normal English that should it only select those service monitors that are managed by the helm chart. And we want to set it to false. By default, it's set to true, but we want to set it to false, and that's why we specify it here. Now, if we don't specify it, Prometheus won't be able to discover our application. Now, Prometheus will discover our application later on through a service monitor, okay? This is a service monitor, and we will look at that later on. But we will need this values YAML file to specify these values that are sh they should not be the default values, okay? These values should not be the default values. Similarly, for Grafana, we want to have the default data sources enabled, which is Prometheus. And then we want to also add Loki as our additional data source. Okay, so these are the two things that we want to specify here. Now, how do I know how this YAML file is going to be structured? If you're new to Helm, I highly suggest you to check out my previous videos on Helm. But how do we specify that actually? Now, if I go back to my here, my, my uh, windows <laughs> um, and back to the Helm chart, we can see that this Helm chart has a value YAML file. And through the values YAML file, we specify the values that should be defined within the Helm chart. And then upon installation of the Helm chart, they are just plugged into the Helm chart, okay? It makes it really cool, really dynamic, okay? Now, if we look here, if we go down, we have several different aspects to it. Now, I want to find the Grafana one, for example. Um... Okay, so as you can see here, by default, Grafana is gonna be enabled as part of this Helm chart. Now, this uses the normal Grafana Helm chart. So if you are unsure of where those values come from, it's always useful to really read this values YAML file because you will find additional information. Now, here we specify basically anything that we want to specify within the Grafana Helm chart that we deploy as part of this Helm chart. Now, we want to have our dashboards enabled and we want to have our default dashboards. And that's basically uh, and our default data sources and that's specified here. Now, we are not modifying much of it. We are not modifying much of Grafana, just providing an additional data source basically and making sure that the default data source is also going to be installed. And now we can go ahead and we can deploy this Helm chart. And okay, to have the Helm chart for the Prometheus operator stack, we have to first give we first have to add the Helm chart to our Helm integration. 
and now it tells me that it's already existing like prometheus community already exists as part of my helm charts now we have to do helm repo update and what that command does every time you run a helm repo update it's fetching the latest changes from the git repository with the helm charts which is like as you can see right now it's updating all of the helm charts that i have within my helm integration so let's install our prometheus operator do helm install from and then from the prometheus community repository we want to cube prometheus stack and we want to deploy it in namespace monitoring now to deploy it in namespace hold monitoring i first have to create a namespace called monitoring cube kernel create namespace monitoring so now the namespace monitoring is created and now i can go ahead and say helm install in that namespace and as you can see here at the end we want to specify our values yaml file we want to give that to helm to overwrite some of the default values right so we're going to do that. Now this might take a few seconds to install everything, which is completely fine. We're just going to wait it out. Now, as you can see, our Helm chat is installed, is deployed. And now that everything is deployed, we can take a look at our cluster. Now I love to use K9S just to see that all of the resources that we deployed, everything in here in that monitoring unit, so this is everything we deployed just now, um, is up and running. Because now that it's up and running, we can port forward to Prometheus and to Grafana. And we're gonna do it over here. So kubectl port forward service from kube Prometheus stack Prometheus in namespace monitoring. And these are the ports. And similarly, we want to port forward to Grafana. So those are two are port forwarding right now. Um, now, if you're unsure how the name is, you can look for services. You can also query the services within the monitoring namespace. Now, these are all of the services we have here, and that's how I know how they are called and basically how to port forward to them. And then once I open up our localhost, if I go to targets, if I refresh, and go to targets, I see all of the default targets. So basically Prometheus, the Prometheus stack operator chart is monitoring itself. These are all service monitors that are deployed. So I can also go ahead and go within KNNS, query for service monitors, service monitor. Okay, so these are all the service monitors <laughs> that are running. Um, and through those, Prometheus now knows which um, targets to monitor ultimately, right? Now, if I refresh Grafana, this is from before. Now we need to know what the login details are. It's pretty straightforward. You can either look at the Helm chart itself. It's specified in the values YAML file what the login details are. However, I'm lazy. I don't want to scroll through that. So what you can do instead is you can go to secrets. And then within secrets, you can then look for Grafana. And you can find here this Grafana secret. Now, if I look for YAML, you can find here the admin password and the admin user. Now, I already decoded it, so I'm not going to do that again right now. And once you decode it, it's basically the name of your deployment, which is PROM in my case, and then operator. Operator. This is going to be, however, my login credentials. My username is going to be admin and then it's going to be the prom operator since i named my helm chart deployment prom and now i'm logged in awesome so now i want to go to data sources and i can see here loki as being defined and i see prometheus as being defined now prometheus is the default one and loki is the one that i added now if i go to the data source it will not be able to access because loki is not running yet now we have to get loki up and running how do we going to do that well we need to add our grafana repository similar to how we just added the we have a, the Com prometheus community repository we need to add our grafana repository to have access to those helm charts within right and then you should usually run helm repo update as well but i just ran that so i'm not going to run it again and next we need to have some configurations for loki or Promptail in that case. Now, how does Promptail and Loki work? You need Promptail or another tool. There's Fluentd, I think, um, that you can use instead of Promptail. 
and you basically install prompt chain um, through a Helm chart, which we're going to do now. That will create this Helm chart for prompt Helm from Grafana prompt Helm in our monitoring namespace. We'll take the prompt Helm value SAML file that I just showed you and install everything in the monitoring namespace. And it basically will spin up three instances of prompt head, one of every node. We have three nodes in our three instances in our cluster, three nodes running, and it will install one prompt head on each of them. So it just installed prompt head. So if I go to K9S, it should spin up the pods for prompt head. So if I look for them, well, at first I need to look for pods, right? Pods, and then as you can see here, they're just gonna get ready. Now, it might take some time for them to get ready. Let's look at the events, Evan runs. Okay, so they should be up and running now. Awesome, we have prompt time running. Now, next we have to install Loki, right? So we're gonna use the Loki distributed Helm chart from Grafana and we're gonna install it also in our monitoring namespace. Now for the Loki Helm chart, we're just gonna install everything out of the box, okay? Just everything as it is, we're gonna install it. Awesome. Now Loki is up and running. So we can go back to our cluster and take a look at Loki being created. Now Loki has several different components. It has the distributor, the gateway, the ingester, and the courier. I've just done a talk with Alex Jones on Loki and we outlined all of those different components. If you're curious about Loki, comment below and I can make a separate video on Loki where I dive into more detail. I'm not going to go into more detail in this video. Uh, this is all, so it's just spinning everything up. And once everything is up, we can then connect to Loki in our Grafana dashboard. So let's go back to Grafana and we're going to go back. I'm going to refresh and we're going to see if we can already connect to Loki. So we're going to test it. Okay, not everything is probably just up yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at our application before we um, go back to Loki again. Now, for the application, I have here a deployment. So this is a standard Kubernetes deployment, as you can find it everywhere, kind of. Um, now, let's go over it a bit. We kind of call it just app in namespace demo, just a label of app. Now, labels make it easier later on to run specific queries. For example, uh, four different metrics in Prometheus. Now, we want to have a replica set of three. Three replicas of this app, of this application. Now, then we have a selector label. And the selector label basically makes it possible to connect to the service and the service monitor and so on. So, that one should be in place. Okay. And then within the specifications, it's another important point. We specify the ports. Port in this case and we specify our image now in this case it's the ping pong initial image and I just moved that okay so this has a service connected to it okay and here is the same selector which is up and then here are the ports again and it's just a basic service just gonna use cluster IP it's just a basic service the other important point is our service monitor now through the service monitor Prometheus will be able to discover our service, which is very, very nice, very important, okay? So, we want to deploy everything. And we're just going to do that for running kubectl apply. Well, actually one thing, kubectl create namespace demo. Always use separate namespaces. Now, let's go ahead and deploy our application. kubectl apply file application, application, in namespace demo. And this is going to deploy everything that's in our applications folder. Now we want to be really careful with using specific directories, for instance, um, application, because it will install everything within a directory. Now at the same time, if we say delete file, everything within the application directory, it will delete everything within it, all the YAML manifests. So just be a bit careful with it. As you can see, we have our deployment, our service, our service monitor. If I go ahead and I open, oops, K9S <laughs> again, uh, I can see here that I have a new namespace, demo, and I have here my three instances of my application running. Now, if I go to service monitor, 
I can see that I have now a service monitor web and demo. Now Prometheus is going to monitor all of my namespaces for service monitors, not just the monitoring namespace. And that's because we specified it at the beginning through the custom values YAML file. Okay. That's how we specified it. Now let's go back to Prometheus. Okay. And we want to refresh it and we want to probably port forward it again. So let's go back and we're just going to port forward it again. And then hopefully it's going to show up. Okay. So let's go back and let's refresh. Where's my app service monitor? There it is. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Now they are not up yet because they have not been scrapped yet. So we have to wait until Prometheus actually scrapes my um, app service through the service monitor. So how does that actually work? Well, we have here our service monitor and that connects to the service. It's monitoring the service and the service is connected to our three uh, instances, our three replicas of our application. Now, how do I make it scrape it? I guess I just have to wait. Oh, no, it scraped it. I'll refresh. And <laughs> yay, it's all up and running. Whew. Okay. <laughs> so now we have everything set up, okay? We have Loki set up, we have Prometheus set up, we have Grafana set up. And now if we go to Grafana again and we refresh it, we just refresh and we go again to our data sources, we go to Loki, we test it. It can now finally connect to Loki. Awesome. Everything is set up. No, the last source to everything, the last like sprinkles on top is Commodore. Now let's install the Commodore agent. We have the Commodore agent right here. Sorry, right here. Now this is the repository that specifies how you can access the Commodore agent. Now you have to have access to the dashboard, otherwise the agent is pretty useless. Like you won't see much, I think, without, <laughs> without having access to the UI. Also, you need access to the UI to have access to the API key and so on. So please just sign up to Commodore and you will get access and you will get everything that you need. So uh, we need to have the Helm repository added to our Helm charts. So we're going to do that now. Okay, we're going to exit this and Helm repo add Commodore IO with the link to the repository. Now it already exists. Helm repo update. You should at least do that every once in a while in case somebody pushed any changes, but it's very unlikely since I just did that. But anyway, now we have Commodore within our Helm charts and now we can go ahead and deploy the Commodore agent. Now, before I do it, I want to take a look at the dashboard. As you can see in my dashboard, there's nothing listed right now, like nothing, right? This is my dashboard. There's no cluster connected. Now to connect the cluster, I have to go to integrations and as you can see here, my different integrations that I've set up over time. Um, and you can see here within Kubernetes, I have my API key. Now I will need this API key and I'm going to show you why. Basically when I install the agent, Helm uppercase will install Commodore Watcher and I'm just going to query a previous command. So like that, I need to specify here. And you can find this command right here from the Git repository. Or if you go over here, new documentation, you will be led to the GitHub repository. That's here. And you can find that command. Okay. So this will install the watcher and the Commodore agent in your cluster. Okay. And set your cluster name. In this case, we want to call it demo, not demo end. So let me just correct that everything is going to be installed through this command. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it. I'm just going to install the Commodore agent on my cluster. Now it's installed. So we can go back to the UI to Commodore and we're going to go back to services and we refresh. And once the agent is up and running, it should forward information on our, all of our resources to Commodore, to the platform. Now, as you can see here, all of our services and we can query by our specific namespace, right? 
And we have our app running, but the app doesn't have a pinger yet. Now let's install the pinger and look a little bit more on this app. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install kubectl, apply, file, we're gonna apply the pinger, oops, pinger in our namespace demo, okay? We want to apply the pinger as well because the pinger is gonna ping the application. Now, next we're gonna do port forward kubectl port forward on our app. Now our app is going to run on port 8080 in our demo port. So why am I going to do that? Why am I going to port forward? Let me show you. So as you can see, our pinger is currently unhealthy. Oh no, it's healthy. It was unhealthy before. If we refresh. So Commodore is going to show us if something is unhealthy and healthy. Awesome. Now here, I have 8080. If I go to this, this is, there's nothing, okay? There's nothing on port 8080 on that endpoint directly, on a default endpoint, because it's a very simple app. However, if I go to Pinger, on HTTP, it tells me it's not found. So if I go to metrics, I can see my metrics. Okay, I want to show you the pinger. So it's a, it's still warming up probably. Now, if everything is set up, whenever you write here, whenever you put ping here in the URL, it should respond with a pong. Now you're gonna test it in a second again. However, as you can see, here are lots of metrics. Now these metrics will now be gathered by our lovely Prometheus, so we can query them. And I'm gonna show you in a second how we do that. Now, this application is supposed to show you latency of the application. We have an entire demo independent of this that uses Agro Rollout. So if you're curious, check that out on the link. But ultimately, we're going to gather that those metrics, okay? And I'm going to show you how you can identify low latency, high latency, whatever. High latency, <laughs> that's what we don't want. And debug our application through Commodore. So here are the metrics. Let's test our ping application. Again. And here, it responded with a pong. Now ignore this trace ID because that's for tempo, which is in the original demo. And I'm going to set that in one of the future demos. So if you're interested in how to set up tempo for tracing, then also subscribe to my channel. Now, everything is working amazing. We can see that our application, everything is running. Now we want to go ahead and we want to update our deployment, our replica set. Okay, we want to update it now. So we are going to use the following command. Let me find it. Um, now I'm just going to say kubectl in namespace demo set image de of deployment app. Uh, the image is going to be an Urix ping pong slow. Okay. This is our update. This is a new container image that we now want to deploy. So we basically say that instead of here in our deployment, instead of having here initial, it's going to be the slow version. Okay. Now, usually you have, for example, 1.5 or 1.6 and so on, right? You have specific tags. In our case, we're going to update the tag from initial to slow, okay? So, but we're just going to do that through a kubectl command, okay? So now it's going to get updated. We can have a look at how um, it's going to be updated. So we're going to go to pods and all of our pods. And as you can see, these are going to get terminated, our original parts of our previous deployment and the new parts are just being spun up. Now, once we've done that, as you can see now all of the parts are running or one maybe is missing. Ah, here it is. Okay. <laughs> um, we can see here, if we go to our app, we can see that events that here basically the service got deployed. That was our initial deployment. Okay. And it sees the image. It's this ping pong and it's basically the initial one, the initial one. And now we deployed it to have the slow one. Updated tag, slow. Now, Commodore already identified what has changed. Just the image has been changed, right? So here's the original image and here's the new image. So it tells me what happened. And I can see here the different events, right? I can also go ahead and view the live logs of my application, right? I can see what events happened over time of my, of my pods and I can see the live logs should there be any. Now I know that, yep, 
there are some logs. No, um, there are some errors in there, probably due to Tempo being unavailable, as you can see here. Tempo doesn't work right now, so I can't really forward anything to Tempo and it's complaining about that. But we're going to fix that in one of my future tutorials, so stay tuned for that. So, pinger, okay? This is the pinger. It had just has one deployment. It has not more deployments. There's a health check of it. It used to be unhealthy, now it's healthy. And Commodore gives me all of that information. Now, it also shows me the related services, which is amazing. So I can say, okay, I want to see both. I want to see both my app and my pinger because those are interconnected, right? They're interconnected. So it makes sense to see them all in one, right? Awesome. So now I have that. I want to query, basically, I can see the events, right? I can see everything nicely and explore all of my services, all of, all of my different namespaces. Everything works amazing, right? Now, I want to go ahead and I want to query Grafana, right? And we're going to go into explore and we have here our different data sources. In our case, we're going to stay with Prometheus and I'm going to show you the command that we're going to use with Prometheus. Now, give me a second. So we are going to query the latency over the past five minutes, right? So we're going to run the query and ooh, what's happening here? Now this looks fascinating, right? <laughs> so we're going to check out this specific part of it. We're going to zoom a bit in. And as you can see, the latency was lower and now it just got higher up, right? It increased. The latency increased with our new updated deployment. Right? It's no higher. So, oh, something must have happened here. So usually if you see that, you want to set up dashboards and then you want to set up uh, alerting, alerting rules. So for example, it says if the latency is higher than X, please alert me. Now, if you're coming here from a SRE perspective and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Let's figure it out, right? Um, you see that something happens, right? Like something is off of our application, right? That's me as an SRE monitoring the application. I'm like, oh, there's something going on. We need to figure out what's going on there, right? Because we don't want to have our customers to experience high latency of our application. They should access our services and everything immediately, right? That's the idea. So I'm going to look at it and I'm like, e there's something going on. Now I can go ahead and instead of asking the developers within my team, I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, what events happened over time? Okay, there it is. So something happened, right? Something here happened. Two deployments happened. Hmm. One deployment happened. Two deployments, one deployment. Now this is more the time around when the latency increased, right? 526. Now I can also set a different time, but that's my time. So it's handy to have that my time. So here, 529 20, actually, not 26, 529. Does that fit together with what we see in Grafana? Here, 529, that's when it started. That's when the high latency started. <gasps> that must be the deployment, right? So you're basically a detective and you're like, okay, this deployment over here messed up, right? So this is this deployment. Okay, so the image tag changed, right? A new container image got deployed and we can see here the differences. Everything is shown within Commodore. Awesome. I can see everything that changed. This is not good. We need a rollback. We need an update. Now I can go ahead and tell the developers, look, this is wrong, right? <laughs> we need to update it, right? So the developers can then be like, oh, there's something really wrong with the application. I'm going to test for that, right? And then in the end, they can deploy a new update. That's what we're going to do now. So this is our update, kubectl in namespace demo set image de of deployment app to ping pong best. That's what we're going to do now. Okay. Now we're updating the image. Let's go ahead again to our cluster. And as you can see, the new containers are being created and the old ones being deleted, right? The old ones are just going to die. Now we can go ahead and we can query again our Commodore dashboard, right? We want to query our services. We want to take a look at the pinger and see any new deployments happened. Ah, it already saw that there's a new image, right? Our best image is being deployed right now, right? And the pod status, we can have a look at that as well and see any events and uh, <laughs> describe our different pods. Um, and now let's go back to Grafana and let's refresh, run query. And hopefully 
we can see the latency now over time go down again. So let's wait a little bit and see the latency hopefully drop back down. Now, as you can see, in the meantime, the combination between having Commodore and having all the services and seeing all of the different events that happen over time in combination with my Grafana dashboard is very, very handy for debugging purposes. Now, I can't expect my engineers or my team to actually know how to use Grafana, how to use PromptQL, right? They have better things to do and they should have better things to do. But I can show them instead Commodore and be like, look, you deploy it, you push to Git, because this ultimately you don't have to do it through kubectl, right? You can have uh, the updates happening to your container image through Git as well, right? So I can tell them, see, you updated the container image here too slow to the slow tag and we experience high latency. You have to fix it, right? <laughs> you have to think about that. It's probably not how you communicate with them, but uh, you get the idea, right? And then they go ahead and update the image again based on the errors that I've reported to them and based on us knowing that it was the previous deployment. Now, if a service goes down, Commodore will mark it as red. The service is not down. However, we could see that it had like high latency of our deployment. And now let's do the past five minutes. Maybe something else is down now. Now this is gonna be a mystery for our next video. <laughs> now again, if no, now again, if you do, now again, if you do prefer the written version, it's linked below. So check that out. Make sure to sign up to Commodore. Try it out. See how you like it. See how it helps you in your debugging process. Maybe let me know in the comments what you think about Commodore and how you plan to use it or how you plan to test it out. I really hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Now, I hope this was useful. Again, the written version to this entire video, to everything I showed you, is linked below with all the different steps that I just showed you. So make sure to check that out. Also, make sure to sign up to Commodore. Let me know in the comments, how do you plan to use Commodore? What do you think about Commodore after seeing me using it within my demo? Now, if this video was useful, please make sure to give it a like, thumbs up, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for upcoming videos. I have lots of upcoming tutorials as well as full courses planned. Now, I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.